Real people, real talent, real voices. Right here in the DMV. We call it Hollywood in Washington, D.C. With your host, Tammy Barbosa. Hello, good afternoon. This is Jim the Gishu, your host for Hollywood in Washington, D.C. And we're in Alexandria premiering our project uh, it's called Return of Jade Brooks. Um, and uh, here with me is my good friend who started an MJ production back in way in 2006, I believe. Uh, six times Grammy nominees, and now also uh, producing his own project that we're going to talk a little bit. Uh, Cisco, or Frank Stilanson, thank you for, for, for coming and, and supporting the project. How are you? Oh, fine. Thanks, Brother June. It's always great to be here and stuff. How's everybody doing? Great. Uh, all right. All right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have half of our guests already attended uh, uh, the premiere. Uh, what do you think about this project? I know you haven't seen it yet, but based on the music that we put together, what do you think? Yeah. Oh, I think it's definitely going to be a, another success, another smash hit. You know, I, I can't wait to see it. You know, I saw some of the script, though, even though I haven't seen the actual video. So I'm just excited to see uh, how you put it together. And as always, you know, you're the editing uh, genius, so I love it. Yes, uh, I know this is a director, Scott, so uh, there's still a lot more stuff that we need to do. But director, Scott, meaning we can put everything that we can put just to show it to the, to the cast and crew. Uh, but of course, the final may change a bit depending on how much uh, 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 film that we want to put uh, put it out there. But there's some more stuff that I need to do. So, uh, director's cut is not the full final cut uh, version of the movie yet because we are trying to submit this to a film festival and hopefully distribution. I know we have a distribution company that. After a couple of showing, we're going to show it, uh, this movie in our distribution channel. By the way, let's talk about your project, Lion of Judah Legacy. <laughs> this, this is your first project, and it took uh, a year, I guess, year and a half to write the screenplay, and it took us two years, and we just finished last week filming the last scene. So tell us about the process of the, the whole thing for your first time. Uh, yeah, two years, it was very depressing. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but it was awesome. I mean, yeah, a few times there, I definitely didn't think that we were going to make it and get through with it. But, you know, thank goodness you stayed and persevered, and we finally got it done. So it's all love. It's all blessings. Uh, yeah, I can't wait to um, you know, show the, uh, do the premiere uh, next uh, summer in July. Hopefully show the local premiere. So. Good. And um, I know it'll take, by the time we show this movie, it probably it takes three years. Uh, from the start, and me, you know, me sometimes I do average of three films a year, and I'm kind of, you know, I'm more like, since I'm the, uh, the screenwriter, everything else, I'm editor and everything else, I try not to wait, because, you know, there's a lot more projects coming, and I know this project can do well, because based on what we saw, uh, the first cut, and we still in post-production. By the way, we're going to be showing, uh, we didn't have time to put together a small teaser trailer, but I will show before the movie uh, the, at least the credits that we put, we started, so they're gonna see it who's who in this project. Uh, and also, you said that you also submitted this to Grammy, right? Yeah, oh yes, 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 the theme song, the, uh, Colonizer Rock, is submitted uh, to the Grammys for this year for oh. in January. So, but I know we'll know by next month whether it gets nominated or not this year. So I'm excited about that. Right. Yay. And how many songs total do you think we're gonna put? Uh, your original composition to this uh, project? I'm, I'm thinking maybe three or four may add to this, uh -huh. for, for this movie and stuff. So then, uh, so then by the uh, premiere in the summer, you know, it'll be ready to go and then I can submit it next year. So. Yes. So uh, hopefully this time, you know, you've been, you've been nominated in the Grammy more than, I'm not going to say because nominee is a big deal. And you've nominated six times and our first project way back in 2006, which is Full Circle, we got we put 37 original soundtrack, but one of the songs that were nominated, and then the following year when I did collide again, we're nominating the Grammy. So uh, it's a good thing, but uh, of course during those years uh, it's hard to beat Jay Z and all the big production music production. <laughs> but still for me it's still good to be nominated in the Grammy. Definitely. Yeah. So again, thank you so much, brothers and sisters, Frank, Steele Anderson, and uh, uh, it's gonna be fun. 
Uh, I, nice you find me. I can't believe my brother. Thank you. Thank it's, you. It's, for it's always a pleasure. Thanks, everybody. Uh, winning director, producer. Uh, I believe that's the uh, winning director or, or, or writer for the WMIFF and other film festival. Rico. Uh, I'm everything. Everything. <laughs> Yes, uh, Rico, I've known Nico for several years now. He's doing a big project, uh, uh, this TV series called Gene, right? Yes. So can you tell us about that project, uh, Rico? Um, that project is about uh, some geneticists who will have by the government to uh, create an enhanced soldier. But one of the doctors created something uh, a little bit offbeat. So, the government has found out, and now they're trying to eliminate that project. <laughs> and uh, I heard this is your third episode, your third episode? Yeah, we finished episode two this year, and uh, so we're actually currently filming episode three. Good, congratulations. And the, the episode two actually was submitted to, the, to my film festival, the World Music and Independent Film Festival, and got nominated several a nomination. Can you tell us the, nom the, the nominee, nominees uh, for, for this project, Gene? Yeah, um, I know on the first one we had like five nominees on the first episode, and then on the second episode, I think we got the same thing. We got five more. Uh, one of them is a guest here now, which is uh, Sharon Tolliver. We have uh, Lauren Lee, uh, Val Lowe, who was um, actually a winner as the uh, last best year for the supporting actress. Yes. Um, no, that was this year. I said, what, this year? Yeah, that was this year. Yeah, February okay. this year. Right, right, because it's kind of overlap for the 12th annual yeah, she won for Best Supporting Right, 2021. Uh, but this is kind of overlap, that's why it's a 13, but actually gotcha. the winner is going to be 2022. Oh, okay. Although it was, uh, the nominees are 2021, but actually it's for the 2022 uh, gala for, am I right? Right, so this is going to be 2022 <laughs> when, I, when I post it all the way next. Gotcha. But well, well, Valo, she's still in that one too, also. What other project you working on besides this uh, this series? Um, I'm, I'm actually looking for um, other actors to bring on board, um, new younger actors, um, for two other projects. One of them is called um, Autonomous. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go into details into that one. Um, and another one, oh man, I forgot the name of that one. Uh, yeah, but it's it's two more projects. Oh wow! So uh, busy, busy. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's good. And of course, you know, like you and I, this is just more like a hobby project because we do have a well, you have a full time <laughs> job. I'm retired four years now. But uh, well, thank you so much for yes, for coming you. out and supporting. And uh, um, I hope you like the movie that we're working on. And I'm sure you're gonna say something to me later on June. Uh, maybe you can fix this a little bit because I know you are a perfectionist. Uh, because I've seen your work. So Nobody's anything, perfect. Nobody's perfect. I know. Anything <laughs> will help for your input forever. So I can, because this is not uh, the final cut. This is just right. the director's cut. But this, I, I do I still do a little bit more of tweaking and, and all the movie. But again, thank you so much. And thank I you. hope you stay with the part and we can party with us later, right? Oh, for a little bit. For a and we're back. Uh, again, this is Jim Lee, your host for Hollywood in Washington, D.C. And I have these three beautiful young girls who played a major part in the movie Return of Jane Brooks. Uh, in the movie, I, I put a title there, Fallen Angels, but they are actually captive girls in the movie. And I have, I'm here with me right next to me is Elena Braverman. Is that right? Yes. And Elena here, if you, uh, if you don't know, she played uh, a major part in this movie. She's also uh, a model and walk in a runway in New York Fashion Week. And she's been in every major uh, modeling agency, agency in New York. And she's also been into a lot of films, including what I heard you're in Spider-Man, right? Yes. So can you tell us about, first tell us about your role in Return of Jade Book as Captain Girls? I play a girl named Kalani and she gets kidnapped by sex traffickers. Mm -hmm. And um, how do you like your role? Did you have fun doing that? Oh, it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> and tell us a little bit about your other project, if I forgot not to mention your other big project that you're in right now in terms of the movie or the TV series. Oh, I've been um, in Spider-Man, The Greatest Showman, and Law and Order as for you. 
Wow. And of course the uh, and of course the uh, the modeling. Uh, I, I just saw your pictures. You look amazing uh, in in the magazine and and in New York uh, during the passion, New York Fashion Week. So, uh, well, thank you very much. It's an honor for me to be Absolutely. you being part of the project, and I am so glad. Uh, I really thank you, Mom, for, for helping out and driving all the way from Long Island to be with us and join this uh, WMIFFMJD family. Thank you, Elena. And thank you. Stay right there. And Grace. Hi. Uh, <laughs> you did an amazing job uh, playing your role when we did the backstory and everything. And Grace is only 14 years old. But uh, she acted like, yeah. like she's really been to a lot of projects. Have you been to a lot of projects besides Return of Jay um, Brooks? No, I think this is honestly my first project. It was really fun. We did a, like, a lot of running, screaming, and crying, and you know, being se sex trafficked, I guess. Um, <laughs> which is, it's really horrible. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was a really good experience. I think you're such a kind director, and you all you think about everybody. You're like, oh, I gotta get pizza, gotta get, <laughs> we gotta make sure we have drinks for everybody. And, and you're just, you're very inspiring. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, thank you. And uh, this is not gonna be your first uh, film. I can promise you that because mm -hmm. I've seen your point and said, wow, this is a very natural, talented actress. And I think you're gonna be landed a lot more role because Actually, I'm doing a, a third series, which is a trilogy. Hopefully, you guys are available. I can mm -hmm. use you again because you're local. You're part of Winchester area, yeah. and I can easily go there. And, and again, thank you for for being part of this project. And uh, I tell you, you did an amazing job portraying your role. Of course, thank you. Thank you. And of course, uh, we have here Tori, or sometimes you want to be called Victoria. Uh, so, uh, Tori, tell us about your experience in the movie as the, one of the captive girls. I played Emerson, and um, I was kidnapped, mm -hmm. and I thought I was talking to a boy, but um, he actually kidnapped me and took me to an unknown place. Right. And Tori's also 14 years old. Uh, so Tori, I know you you also been to a few other movies. Can you tell us a bit about your IMDb project that you've done before? Uh, uh, before? Yeah. Um, so I've been in Angels Within and Second Hand Store Realtors. And um, for Angels Within. Um, yeah, I, I know the uh, I know the uh, the writer and the director of that project. Uh, uh, he won best supporting uh, actor way back in two thousand and ten. I believe in my first annual uh, in the movie, and he's a very good director and, and screenplay. Uh, by the way, guys, these are all Connie Lamont's uh, talent. Connie. <laughs> Alright, guys. Alright, we play some music later. I, I know you're gonna be here till tomorrow, so we have plenty of time to party tonight. Thank you so much. Powerhouse here. Yeah, I think we have the, the the government of DC right here in my in my <laughs> section here. We get the mayor here. We get the uh, district attorney, and we have the we have the governor. Uh, in the movie, not in the real, not in real life. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I have here uh, <coughs> this, uh, these two ladies right here. It's, it's been in my two projects, and uh, it was a pleasure you guys being part of the, the first project that we did together, and now here. And it's just an amazing time, and you can be in a lot more project uh, with me coming up. Thank you. And I'm here with my right, people call her Lazy Lazy, but her real name is Cassandra Grant. How are you, Cassandra? I'm good, thank you for having me here. Uh, I know you've been doing a lot of projects since I worked with you last year. Can you tell us, well, first of all, tell us about your role in uh, Return of Jay Brooks. Well, I'm playing the role of a district attorney. Um, I don't want to give anything away, but it'll be on the screen shortly. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, how's your experience working as a district, district attorney? 
Um, it was good. It was great. Um, I got a chance to um, have my role with um, Michael. He's not here, but mm -hmm. my role was with Michael and Kathy and the governor and, the, and Bud, the pastor. Right. Uh, as you can see, as we go, old, as we grow older, grow older. I mean, you know, getting older. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Our role sometimes it's kind of step up because last year, uh, in the movie uh, "To Live and Die in DC," you were a uh, role for a uh, uh, original story by Lance Hill. Mm -hmm. You played as an attorney, right? Um, I was a lawyer. Attorney. You was yes. a lawyer. Yes, now lawyer. you have become district attorney. Yeah, I'm moved up. Yes, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and what other project you working on? Because I know you're so busy now. Yeah, all of a sudden I got busy, and now for 2022, my calendar is absolutely booked. Wow. I woke up and I have all these emails of, of being cast in different movies. So next week I'm at the. Um, I have a premiere of Terra Diva. Mm -hmm. I'm starring in that movie with Lion Backman, and um, I'm just I'm just so excited about that one. Yes, of course. Have a lead role with, with him. That's Keisha yeah. Coleman. Yes. I have some other. I have three, four movie projects already for 2022. Mm -hmm. The first Sweet. one will be out. It, it's it, it'll be um, premiered Valentine's Day because the name of it is Valentine's Day, mm -hmm. and it's about love. Valentine's love. I'm sorry. And I have another movie coming out, Whispers, and Kathy's in one with me. What is the other third one we woke up to and found out we That's were in? All Money Isn't Good Money. Yeah, so Kathy and I are in a lot of movies together, so um, yeah. we're very excited. And I know you're going to be back if I start, I haven't started writing the screenplay, but I want you back because you are the, the powerful uh, characters in the movie, and uh, I really want you back. I know it's going to be hard to coordinate next year since you're going to be busy, but you know, just give me a schedule. All I need is one day, okay? And I great. can knock all your scenes in one day. I'm gonna make sure because you, you didn't kill us off in this movie, so I'm right. gonna make sure that I'm back to you know, do this movie, with right? You. And and Kathy, uh, -huh. uh yes. now this is a big, uh, big step up because last year I used you in the movie To Live and Die in DC as a drug dealer. Yeah. Now become, not a drug dealer, but a drug user. Well, I was a drug dealer. Right. Yeah, and now choice. suddenly you become a governor. What? <laughs> yes. Only in America. <laughs> so tell us about your role. I know you had so much fun doing your role. So tell us about your, your experience. Oh, my experience working with you was so much fun. And it was, uh, everyone was a family. The cast was a family. We had such a great time. But I just enjoyed the role of being the governor. That was uh, so exciting. And uh, we were able to just wrap it up really quickly. And uh, Cassandra, as, as a district attorney, we had a lot of lines together. And we worked on our lines because we wanted to make certain that we had it sharp, crisp, and precise for June. Thank you so much. Yeah. And tell them about the exercise, how we exercise and we walk and read our lines. Oh, we don't want to tell that part, but okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, we used to, we used to walk, we walked and we, we just practiced. We practiced because Walking, we wanted to be. Yeah, and my, my brother, Bud, he, he's the uh, pastor, and we worked with him too on Zoom to make sure <laughs> that we were on point. Yes. Because yes. that's how we wanted to be. And I just want to let you guys know that I, too, am busy. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. So, yeah. So, 2022, I'm so, so excited to be working with Cassie in the movie that I told you about. And then last, last night, I got a call from a playwright. And I was in a play in 2020 before the COVID happened. And we had to, it was a two, it was a two nights and it was sold out. It's called When Boys Exhale. So he called me and he said, Kathy, I want you to bring back the role of Miss Sheila. So we'll be going to Georgia in April, for, from April 20th to April 24th in the play. So I'm like so, so excited. Amen. Yes. 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 And of course, my favorite guy in the world who's been working with me way back in 2006 and he's been playing detective, captain, now he'll become the mayor I believe. He's one of the most professional actors that I've ever worked with, very reliable and uh, I can always, when I, when I give Bruce uh, a schedule, I mean I tell you, he'll be there no matter what and he always bring his character. So Bruce, tell us about your character and your experience working again with me in Return of Jay Brooks. 
Well, as always, it's been a, a great thrill working with you, and I'm grateful for all the opportunities that you've given me. And this movie, I'm really flattered to be the mayor. And uh, the mayor was a, a really good guy. He did a lot for the city. And you, there's a lot of stuff that you didn't see in the background, but he was really good for the city, and uh, he was running for re-election. And uh, during his re-election campaign for another four years, rumors and innuendos started about him being involved in uh, human trafficking, sexual trafficking, but there was no proof. It was just a smear tactic to, to bring him down, since he was doing so well. So. Right, but uh, until I write the trilogy, that could change in a second. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's very flexible, so whichever way you want to go. So. Just to let you know, because I don't want you to turn it down June. I want to stay good in this movie, right? Right. right. But uh, it's just a movie. Sometimes we, we, we play a role that we don't really like to play, but just for acting, who cares, right? right. right. So anyway, yeah, I, I don't think I'll do that to you, but we'll see. <laughs> Innocent until proven guilty. <laughs> right, right. Uh, and Bruce, tell us about your other project. I know you're probably working on something. Uh, right now, I'm really not. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm like t taking a hiatus, pretty much, if you will. But I am looking for work, so if there's any work out there to be had, mm -hmm. I'm willing to go for it. Yes, uh, and I'm surprised because uh, Bruce has been around for ages in acting, and uh, you've been to a lot of my films, right? From Full Circle, Drug Related, Collide. Seven or eight films, yeah. Yeah, wow. that's a lot of films to be <coughs> in. Uh, that's what dedication and. Yes. Uh, yeah. Good acting and everything, that's why I always want to put you back in any of my projects. If I need something like your character that you're working on. Nice. Sounds, so you, good. You, Sounds yes. good. So yeah, again, thank you so much. Uh, and uh, please stick, stick around. We're going to party with the, with, the, with the family. Because now these are all become our family now. Yes. Acting family. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. So uh, don't be a stranger. You guys can talk. Some of you might be get a little bit you know, drunk later on. Oh. If we don't, if we have alcohol. <laughs> but it's okay. It's okay. So uh, it's just it's just happening tonight. Yeah. yeah one more thing. Yes. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. So I know I, I didn't get a chance to say <clears throat> to you. Thank you for the opportunities. When I get home tonight and start thinking about what I said, I'm going to regret that I didn't say that. I don't know whether I said it or not, but I just want to say thank you for all the opportunities. Oh, yeah. thank I you. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. The uh, good actors here, <laughs> and this is the, I think this is the first time I work with with the three except Terry. Uh, but let me introduce you, Wayne Farrow, who played a detective. How are you, Wayne? Oh, well, fantastic. So, Wayne, tell us what's your role in in the project as a detective, and what's your what do you say about it? in terms of your experience and, and everything else? Well, the role, I had to do a stakeout outside of a house, the mayor's house, to catch him in, uh, I don't want to give up the movie, but we wanted to catch him in some acts. So we, we caught a few acts and we sent it in. We, we did a little bit of snitching. Um, so um, I felt great about the movie. I, I liked the part. I liked being a, a police. Uh -huh. Yeah, you look like one too. <laughs> <laughs> Without the beard, but you know, these days uh, you could be full beard and you still could be a police officer. That's like before. But anyway, you are also working in other projects. I've seen you. You're doing something uh, with other projects. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, I believe I um I was a police in another movie as well. So I guess the police thing is me. <laughs> so what project is that? Someone that I know, the, the producers? It was Lance. Oh, it was Lance's movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that. He didn't tell me that she's making another movie. What? <laughs> I'll talk to you when he gets here. But anyway, yeah, so uh, thank you so much for playing your detective role. Thanks for having me. Yeah, sure, and uh, you're back because I didn't kill you yet. Oh, awesome. <laughs> so, uh, so next year you're probably getting back again. <laughs> And here is, uh, we call him a pastor because he looks like one, but I don't think he's the pastor. <laughs> Can you tell us, uh, now, the, uh, I'm sorry about the name because I keep calling you pastor. Can you tell us who you are? I know, just when I say your name, I don't know who gonna, you are. So can you tell us your name? Oh, my name is Walter Jones. Walter Jones. And everyone calls me Bud. Yes, so uh, Walter, 
Is this your first time acting in a movie? First time, and I appreciate you for having me. This oh. was wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, what else that you want to say in terms of the, the, your experience uh, in, the, in, the, in the process of the making of the movie? Well, just invite me back and give me another opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> I really appreciate this. <laughs> Of course, of course, Padre, you're always welcome. Everything that you see Sir Kathy will bring in are all welcome to the MJD production family. And you know me, I just don't bring people in just to be extra background. I will always give them even a small part of the role so they can call and say, yeah, I'm an actor because I have a speaking role. They can just say, hello, and that's a speaking role. Right. Thank you, Pastor. Thank, Thank you, Walter. And of course, Terry Briscoe, uh, a one supernatural talent that I met through uh, Bruce Dawson, I believe. That's the man. And uh, if you're going to watch this uh, Hollywood in Washington, D.C., you're going to hear the voice of Terry because I use him to the opening of Return, I mean, the. Uh, Hollywood in Washington, D.C. How are you doing, Terry? I'm doing good, Drew. How are you doing? Good. So tell us about your role in this movie. I had a really hard name to remember. My character's name was Terry. <laughs> so got that right out the bat. <laughs> I play uh, one of the security details, Mayor Frankie. Right, right. And uh, he's a pretty good guy. You know, he's, he's, there, to, he's there for Frankie. Whatever Frankie needs, he gets it. Right, right. Uh, and I'm sorry that I, I, I killed your character, but <laughs> we, 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 they didn't know that, you. <laughs> I know that, they, but they're going to know now once they see us. <laughs> but anyway, Terry also is in uh, the other project that we finished filming just last week called Line of Judah Legacy. Yeah. You play one of the major roles in there, and it's just a really comedy and everything. So I was really having so much fun working with you in that particular scene. Uh, I couldn't stop laughing watching and everything the movie. Yeah, yeah, I was laughing while we were doing it a little too much myself. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, Terry, uh, I really appreciate you being part of the production, and I do appreciate Bruce for introducing uh, you to me. And uh, we just met, like, not even, what, a year? Not even a year ago. Not even six months ago. About we, that, yeah, about six months. And two films already. Two films. Picture film. Two picture films in less than a year. That's not bad. Hey, thank you. Yes. And Mr. So, Cisco. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, thank you guys. And uh, we're going to talk to you, to you a lot more later on. And I know you guys can stick around till, we, till the end, right? Absolutely. It's today's Saturday. So, uh, I need some body to dance with all our good looking girls here, right? <laughs> so, stick around. Thank you so much. Thank well, first of all, it was a pleasure. Uh, that one of these busy actors has been everywhere in the DC, DC, Maryland, Virginia, and even all everywhere in New York, LA, and everything. Christopher Inlow. How you doing, Chris? I'm well, how are you? I'm good. Well, thank you so much, brother, for, for supporting this little project here. Oh, yeah. Well, I know some of the people, and it's, it's really nice to see so many people represented by Connie Lamoth in here. Right. And Connie also representing you. She does represent me. She's amazing. Yes. She's amazing. Yes. And uh, Connie really want to be here, but of course she said, June, I cannot make it because, she, because of the time schedule and everything. But she will be here on, the, on March uh, 12 for the WMIFF. Uh, oh, very cool. To attend because uh, her little short film was nominated uh, for the festival, so she's going to be here. But Chris, I work with you. In the last movie, To Live and Die in D.C., and play uh, a lyric character in there, but it's an important one. Can you tell us about your character, To Live and Die in D.C.? I shot some people, <laughs> and I helped shoot some people. Right. I, the door opened, and I let them have it. No, it was a fun role. It was a fun role. That's one thing that, uh, that I've noticed. When working with you on anything, you have a good way of making things just fun, like having a having an activity here or an event here in your uh, your film festivals have, have always been fun. And, uh, you know, you're always on the move. As soon as one movie ends, you're on, you're another one starting. And you're, 
keeping a lot of the same people involved, which is nice to, I mean, thank me for the support. Thank you for all, all that you do. Yeah, well, you know, that's what I, my, my mission and goal is to promote all artists in the DMV and not just in the DMV. So I I'm really would like to work as many actors as I want so I can promote. Because uh, promoting them, because a lot, even way back that I, some uh, actors and now producers starting in my production now become a big production company, some of the big roles. And for me, it's like, uh, wow, they carry me up there because they started with me. And, and that's all I want. I want them to succeed and everything. But anyway, can you tell us about your project, which you've been doing a lot of projects these days? Um, well... I recently wrapped up doing the on and off screen narration for a Walt Disney Pictures slash family film productions documentary called The Legacy of the Parent Trap, which is a documentary about the original Parent Trap series starring Haley Mills. Um, so that was really cool. I got to spend a day with Haley Mills in New York City. Um, I just got back from California. I uh, co starred in a film out there, a comedy horror called not just another zombie film. Uh, I wrapped up a film around here recently called Brazen Impact, which I believe is going to premiere in spring. And uh, I'm working on a web series under executive producer Eduardo Sanchez, wow. who is the director of the Blair Witch Project. Right. Uh, so, like, things are things are going, they're going well. They're going well. Well, you know, a good actors can always find a good role, and that's you, that's your character, because I've seen you, i worked with you with a little short film a year ago, I think, or a couple of years ago, and I knew that this guy is really good. That was the... Um, uh, that's a 48-hour film project by William Powell. Yes, I played a, a washed-up rapper. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and I heard you only get the, the script the night before, and I saw you in the set because I'm, I'm kind of helping William to work on the project and said, you're still reading your script, you, have, you haven't read it yet, and that's a lot of line to remember right. it was a in lot one of, hour. It was a lot of dialogue. Uh, I received the script basically, um, I don't know if it was the night before or, or maybe early in the, in the morning, but I woke up, I remember waking it up and there was a script, so, but, um, you know, Acting and performing, it, dialogue, loving rehearsing mm -hmm. is part of it. And I don't know any actor that really makes it that doesn't absolutely love like all the little things. You can't just show up on a set and do it. You've got to know how to do everything. Glad nobody was standing there. You got to know. Bam! Sorry about that, sir. <laughs> uh, but you got to know a lot of stuff. And uh, so I, I do a pretty intense rehearsals. And mm -hmm. that particular thing, it was like. Here's the script. There was a like a lot of dialogue. I had to perform it that day, and uh, I was lucky to have the people, y'all like y'all had the right people in place mm -hmm. to make that uh, make that happen. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't just me. Like it was getting there and have comfortable people mm -hmm. to work with that was able to have to make me uh, allow me to pull that off as mm -hmm. nicely as as we did. So thank you. Oh, thank for you, that. thank you, and. Uh, you're going to be very busy, that's why when I find out that you're available today, I better get Chris before he takes off, but you don't want to leave the, the D.C. Mill in Virginia area, are you? Uh, I mean, my mother's here, my son goes to school here, and, uh, you know, today's world, as far as being an actor, is a lot different than it used to be. You know, back, back in the day, you had to go to L.A. to audition for something. A lot of auditions can be done right here in front of your computer. Mm -hmm. So, I mean... I don't see any, I, I, I've worked with Disney, I'm getting ready to do 60 shows with Warner Brothers, the Polar Express in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't see why anybody would feel like they had to force themselves to go anywhere. It's hard work, mm -hmm. you, you know, you put yourself into it, you give yourself to what you're doing, and I think so long as you do that, you're going to have a great chance to, to do it, you know. Uh, just love what you're doing and put everything that you have into it, you know? And, and the word gets around about right, you. People will talk about you. Mm -hmm. And and that's that's what's happened in a lot of uh, a lot of situations. I the director of a movie called Deer Crossing that starred Ernie Hudson mm -hmm. and um, Doug Bradley, uh, he saw me performing in 2010 in Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. 
doing a role that I won a national award for. Mm -hmm. And that was my first full-length feature film. He came up to me and was like, I need to have you in my film. The movie went on to, uh, it was like the third most rented horror film in Redbox in January of 2013. I got great reviews from it, but it was just, this guy saw me here, he brought me into here. This guy saw me here, he brought me into here. You saw me because of William Powell, mm -hmm. and then you brought me into your, your next thing. And it, I mean, it really is, blood is thicker than water. That's right, that's right. And uh, networking is a big deal. And uh, every time you meet an actor, with a really good actor, you're not going to be a second thought of, uh, you know, telling uh, other producers that you got to get this guy uh, to work with because he's very natural and he can play pretty much all characters. And Chris, thank you so much. And uh, it was a pleasure working with you with uh, with Puri Bindai in DC. And hopefully, if I have a project, I know you're going to be hard to get and maybe expensive. But who knows? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, I hope I get the opportunity to work with everybody in this room. Right, right. So, yeah, you yeah. guys are all great. I can't wait to see your movie. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you. Hello again, this is Jim DeGuisi, your host for Hollywood in Washington, D.C. I don't normally host this. Uh, normally, it's either one of the girls that hosts it, which is Tammy Barbosa, but she's doing a big project, so uh, I guess I have to do it. I have no choice. Uh, but it's good. But uh, what I have here is I work with this lady just this in this project and it originally it, she's just gonna get a small role but then when I saw her she she landed to a I changed a bit of the story because wow I think I gotta use more of her uh, playing her character here as Natasha. So this is Bella Levi. How are you doing Bella? I'm doing great, thank you for having me. First of all, I would like to thank you for, for being part of the Return of Jay Brooks. I know you had so much fun working with me and, and bringing in Victory, which I'm going to talk to you after I talk to you about mm -hmm. what you're doing. Uh, this is your first project or you doing you did something else? With you, this is my first project and thank you for having me. Oh, it's uh, truly an honor. Yes. Can you tell us about uh, your project? that you've been before. I know you are also a, a model and Miss, representing Miss Virginia? Miss Maryland, first runner-up. Miss Maryland, first mm -hmm. runner-up. Mm -hmm. uh, so, well, let's talk about the film. Tell us about your, your, your uh, film experience or your other project. Um, I've done a couple of movies. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a couple in the, in the, in the in the air, so I'm a little nervous. Oh, sorry. I'm nervous too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always nervous when I'm talking to some really good looking guy. Oh my god. <laughs> so I've done a couple of, thank you. I've done a couple of uh, movies here in the DMV. Um, basically, anything that puts women in a role of women empowerment, mm -hmm. I've always believed in that. Uh, when I ran for D.C. last year, my platform was women empowerment, and I've always wanted to see women uh, be in positive roles. Women do things that another girl can look at and just say, wow, she looks like me, and she did that. I can possibly do that, too. And currently, I am Miss Maryland first runner-up, and my platform is human trafficking. And that's what connected you and I to this project. Mm -hmm. You originally reached out to me, and I said, I'll be happy just to be an extra. I just want to be part of you know, a movie that is close to my heart. That's why everybody's wearing the, the blue ribbon. And I asked everybody to put it on your left side, close to the heart. <laughs> and also, uh, just a week ago, you were in Atlantic City yes. uh, in Celebrity boxing matches, and I thought you were just going to be hosting, but when I saw the picture, she actually fought somebody. Yeah. Can you tell us about that? Oh my goodness. <laughs> so, yes, I took part of the, the celebrity boxing event, uh -huh. and I actually sparred. It was three one-minute rounds. Three long one-minute rounds. <laughs> but it was a platform for change, and it was a platform to bring awareness, and anybody that knows me that when I first told them, they're like, what is a beauty queen doing in a, in a boxing match? And I often called Victor, and I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. He's like, you'll be fine. And I'm like, okay. Um, but to bring awareness to something that I feel so passionate about right. was good. And um, so um, 
I'm just give me flashbacks, sorry. <laughs> um, it was something that it pushed me outside of my comfort zone, but I'm very glad that I did it. Um, everything that I always do, it's always to bring awareness to something that I'm so passionate about, and mm -hmm. it was for charity. Right. And uh, I can see that uh, you don't have any black eye or bruises. No. I guess you won, right? <laughs> it was actually a draw. Oh, it's a draw. It okay. was a draw, which is better than... Better than a lose. <laughs> because I saw the picture where we take the picture, took the picture there, did a good job because your your hand is right in this girl's fa face. Yeah. So well, then, oh, did she knock her out? No, no, no. It was uh, it was an interesting challenge, and um, and this was held uh, in Atlantic City. In, in Atlantic City at the showboat. Showboat. Mm -hmm. And is there any big celebrity uh, was in attendance? Do you remember who was there? Yes. Um, Nani by Nature. Uh, Trench was there. Mm -hmm. Um, Black China was there, um, Salt and Pepper was there, mm -hmm. uh, some of the fellas from the Love of Hip Hop was there, and, and many more. And of course, Ben is there, so that's, that's a big deal. Victor was there. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> and also, guys, this is Victor Santiago, yes. was introduced to me by Bella uh, to play an extra. Right. But I said, wait a minute, I know I don't want to use him but just an extra, so I kind of prolong a little bit your character as a bodyguard of the governor. Right. And uh, did I ever give you a line? I think I did, right? Uh, we spoke about it, but like I said, I, I came towards the, I don't know if it was the middle, the end, and I played that position uh, with Kathy as a, a CIA agent. Right, right. And uh, Big Two came here all the way from Boston. Right, Boston. Drove all the way, and you're staying for tonight, right? I yes, so. I am. Yes. Uh, yes, and you, you had your son. You yeah, I got my son. Actually, yeah. yeah, Victor also uh, has a big show. Mm -hmm. It's all over. I think, do you have a daily, is it a daily show called Don Big Show? It's called the Don Big Show, yeah. It's it's all through all, you know, uh, platforms and stuff. And uh, I uh, interview all types of people mm -hmm. from um, Hollywood down to the corner guy around the corner. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Uh, yeah, I, I was watching a couple of you show there. Wow, this is very interesting. And and so, how long have you been doing the, uh, the your show? I've been doing the show for about two years mm -hmm. now, consistently, mm -hmm. and um, it's been a great elevation. Mm -hmm. You know, with people coming on the show from, uh, like I said, people from around the corner, mm -hmm. friends of mine, to the Hollywood actors, directors, filmmakers, mm -hmm. book writers, comedians. What types of people come on my show? Wow, wow, yeah, for just two years you you did an amazing job putting it all together. And I know you're also uh, doing any film right now because you get involved in projects like that. Yeah, actually, I want to thank you first for, for giving me the opportunity to be on, 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 on your film. But yeah, I've done a movie in the past called Don Hazel the Gangster. Uh -huh. I, play, uh, uh, I play a gangster, of course. <laughs> 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 I'm a motorcycle gangster. And um, uh, I was just recently um, toward coming to another project with uh, Lisa Bagby, shout out to Lisa Bagby and the whole team. Um, and uh, and some other projects that I'm working on. Right, and uh, just to tell you, uh, I hope you're not that busy next year because I'm gonna need you back. <laughs> well, I'm here, you know, I'm, I'm yeah. willing to work. You know, yeah. that's what yeah. I do. <laughs> and uh, you know, uh, listening to your show, you're thinking uh, you look like uh, some bad guy, bad dude, uh, <laughs> uh, and can play really a, a, a bad character. But actually, your messaging in your in your show is all positive, and I was right. it was amazing. So wow, yeah. I didn't you know see it that way because sometimes people look at you and maybe scared of you. Yeah, I you get know, that. I, I get that a lot. Like time. you know, but I always say never judge a book by its cover. Right. Open the book, read it out, and find out what's inside the book. Mm -hmm. You know, I get that a lot. A lot of people get intimidated by the way I look mm -hmm. and the way I present myself. But I'm harmless, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. Unless you push me to that button. Right. <laughs> then, I gotta, then, I gotta call the, then I gotta call the booms up. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes it helps when you... A lot of actors out there, you, you probably know this guy who came from prison, who's a, who's a very famous guy, I forgot his name. Uh, uh, Diesel. No, no, the guy with a lot of tattoo. The one, Machete. Oh, oh yeah, Machete. Yeah, I know who he is. I yeah, know is. and that guy is all over. I probably have a couple hundred projects now playing, you know, a bad guy, but he's also played in one good 
character, but of course he didn't turn out to be good <laughs> because of your looks. Yeah. So sometimes it helps when you look certain look that people are looking, always looking for something like that in a look in any movie. Right, right. I, I, I try, I always get that about being a gangster or a security guard or a bad guy because I got that look, but I'm willing to do other things, you know, maybe be a father, a motivational speaker, anything. You know, I'm willing to do anything at this point. Yeah, right. Well, you know, honestly, this this guy, I'm going to mention this guy because this one my favorite guy. Uh, his name is Lion Beckwith. I'm sure some of you yeah, know yeah, him. Yeah. Uh, Lion Beckwith, um, he's a good actor. He's been in with me uh, when he's doing the third, his third film. So I used him because he was recommended to me. He said, June, you got to use this, uh, this guy because he got a certain look as a bad person, right. a really bad dude, so I used him to play in this Diary of a Serial Killer as a serial killer, okay. and he did an amazing job, but then later on I was looking at him, he's such a nice guy, mm -hmm. easy to talk to, he said, you know what, I don't know why people keep casting you as a bad person, <laughs> I think, let me do something, because I know this guy one day is going to take off and be famous, uh, he's from Baltimore, I said, and I did, I, I made a short film called a lion's heart. His name is Lion Beckwith. Mm. So I made a story just for him. Uh, he's a SAG actor, but I paid him for that day. <laughs> and I made a story for him called A Lion's Heart. If you look at this guy's IMDb, he has probably about 60, 70 films with Gerard Butler. Uh, he, the last movie he's in, uh, uh, 1984 Wonder Woman. Oh. He's everywhere, but if you look at this IMDb, one, one best actor. And guess what movie is that? Came from A Lion's Heart. Oh, so I wrote, awesome. so I, awesome. he played a small uh, a role, which is a good role. Cool. And everybody didn't see it that way. But he did an amazing job playing as a bad, uh, not a bad, bad look, but a good person. Right. So sometimes, you know, it could work both ways. Right. But thank you so much for supporting this project. I hope you like the movie. It's a director's cut, so it's not the final cut. Mm -hmm. So I know some of people say, oh, you, do, you could have done this, you could have done that, but, you know, I'm still busy, I'm a busy person. So I, I don't have time to do, I've, I've been working with our project, sometimes I'm a, since I'm the director, writer, and the editor, when I see it, I cut it. But sometimes when people see it, June should tell you this way, I listen. I, okay, I do certain things. Right. But I, I'm sure you guys are going to like it. So, uh, uh, I just want to talk about should, my nonprofit real quick. Of course, the Blue Ribbon Project. Yes. So everybody's having, uh, everybody has a blue ribbon, and I have my own nonprofit organization called the Bella Levy Foundation, and I want to attack human trafficking proactively and reactively. And proactively, I have t-shirts, and on the back of the t-shirts, a QR code, and when you scan the QR code, the very first thing it asks you is, do you need police? So that way, anybody who has a device, a lot of these young ladies held in situations that we can only... Uh, just the, the impossible situations they're in. They have these things called burn phones, which they can receive calls, but they can't make them out. So I found a way how to use these guys' technology against them. If you scan the QR code, you go straight to the police, and they can get help. The reactive way is I'm trying to open up a safe haven here in Maryland in a very underserved area, and I want that to serve as a cookie cutter to put one everywhere in the United States. And currently, I've reached out through outside the United States, and the Blue Ribbon Project is now alive in seven different countries. So there's seven other, others of me doing the exact same thing. Because, thank you. Thank you. Human trafficking is not a local problem, it's an international plague. And I know that it's like a matchstick. You can break one, you can break two, you can break three, but you can't break all of us. And when all of us are united, Nothing can stop us. And June, I can't begin to thank you from the bottom of my heart that you reached out to me after finding out what I was doing and created a role for me. So thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Lex Chrysostomo and Tom Chrysostomo, not related, but uh, related in terms of the martial arts. I'm a martial artist, if you guys don't know. Uh, I've done uh, martial arts for over three decades. Uh, but I'm retired now. I retired teaching and competing nationally uh, in way in 2000, but still people call me master. 
uh, because I was a master, but I, I don't think I can fight anymore. That's why I'm doing film. <laughs> it's a different kind of fight. It. I'm becoming a stunt choreographer. But I think I can still fight and unless somebody sucker punch me that I don't see. Then I can still get knocked out. But here with me is one of two of the masters who knows what they're doing. First, I will start with Lex. Lex, I've known Lex for, I would say, maybe 15 years now because his dad and his uncle that i known for so many years that I worked with, also grandmasters in Arnish and Kali. I don't know if you know that, but Kali is a, is a stick, short stick, but they can also use a long stick, but their father, his father and his uncle is the master of that. You never praise him even with a knife because he will stab you a million times. <laughs> because they can do whatever they can do. But Lex, uh, Lex is also an actor who started with me in a horror flick. You play a vampire, I think? Yeah, yeah I died. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I think we killed him. But, uh, but Lex here is a police officer, uh, but he's also uh, over 20 years of training our niece. So first, Lex, thank you so much for giving us some time to use your school to, to, to work on that little stunt that we did, that little skit that we did for the main actor. Uh, so tell us about, uh, first about your acting. How do you like acting? Because I think you can act, you just <laughs> don't have time. Uh, I'm a, mm, <laughs> it's a new gig for me, so I, I, I felt more comfortable in um, the teaching aspect, the way that I could, as a support role to help like the main actor learn certain techniques and moves mm -hmm. that uh, everyone can use. Tell us a little bit uh, about Kali because that is now everybody's favorite in terms of weapon. I used to compete, but I don't use Kali. I use I use the Sai, which is you know what the Sai is. I use the, the bow, and I use the long sword when I compete uh, in weapon division. Uh, but Kali is something that anybody can grab, and you know that you could easily defend. So can you tell us a little bit about uh, what what form of of uh, weapon that you are teaching? Okay, so um, at least for the system that I practice, we're from the south of the Philippines. We're out of Cebu, the Visayas region. Mm -hmm. And um, FMA in, in itself is a weapon-based system. Mm -hmm. um, we do things backwards, where you learn the weapons first, then you work your way back to your empty hands. A lot of other mainstream arts, you have your empty hands, then you spar, and then you go to weapons. The idea behind how we do it is if you learn how the weapon works first, when you're placed in a scenario, you know how to deal with it because you know how it's coming at you. And um, uh, for me, doing it over 20, I don't know, now, 24 years. 24 years. years. Yeah. I saw, I saw um, long. I competed um, live stick um, competitions, um, empty hand competitions. Um, not as great as him, but I'm still <laughs> I'm still working my way through, and um, I cover the East Coast. Well, um, my instructors, uh, Haniti West and Iti Walter, they cover, they teach the Coast Guard in the Philippines, and uh, in the West Coast as well. Right. So, right. Um, one good advantage of learning and knowing about that, but now since you become a police officer, you don't need all of that. Just Put your gun and shoot, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can do that. I'm just saying that if you need to, who need to use our knees if you can shoot oh, yeah. faster? We have a whole belt of tools, but I try not to use as much of the tools. You know, if I could de-escalate verbally, you know, right. and right. end it there, it's the best way to do it. But if it has to, I, and, at least I know something that can take care of myself and the people around. Me. Right, so. right. And uh, Tom, uh, I think somehow you guys are related, you just didn't check. Yeah, actually, we are related. So, uh, oh, you know, you are. I took a little bit of time to talk to my, uh, my, uh, my Tito, which is an aunt in Tagalog, uh -huh. in the Philippines. So I talked to my aunt a little bit, and uh, turns out that where his family's from, our families are from the same area, it's just that the family's kind of diverse. So whereas his family went down south uh -huh. to Cebu, mine stayed in the, uh, in the area. Mm -hmm. 
So that's where, where our family is from. So we're related. So, you know, once I found out that, uh, you know, our family is from the same region, it's like, yeah, we're related. I don't have to worry about the, the genealogy or anything else like that. What other uh, Pueblo martial art besides uh, Kali are you are, are in practice? Yeah, so I do practice a large number of different martial arts from kendo uh, to Japanese jiu-jitsu, mm -hmm. which incorporates both strikes along with uh, grappling and also joint locks. I've also practiced um, uh, Aikido, mm -hmm. Judo, and, and many others. So a very wide variety of martial arts. And one thing that I really love about Kali is just the, um, just the influence of many different martial arts incorporated into one. So uh, Lex is, is really humble. I mean, he's great as a, as a master. Uh, whereas with his system, it's a lot more close quarters. I'm used to fighting more of long range. So I would have to learn how to range from long range to cl uh, medium to close, mm -hmm. and then using different martial arts depending on the situation. Right, right. Uh, you see, guys, don't mess with Asian guys, especially Filipino, <laughs> because we're short. But, you know, don't, again, don't judge uh, the book by its cover because we can fight. <laughs> and, uh, uh, well, thank you so much. Uh, stick around. Uh, I know I only used a little small portion of the uh, in the movie, but it's important where the leading actors are, are trying to learn some type of weapon and choosing your weapon, which is Arnick, is one of the best weapon that that she could uh, easily no no experience or anything that could easily learn, and she did a good job being there for less than an hour. And I was watching, wow, she learned a lot. And thank you guys for teaching her, uh, you know, the, the arts. And, and Brandon, uh, Brandon also, uh, come on in, Brandon. Brandon is the son of Bruce Dawson. He's also been in my movie. This is your second movie with me, right? It's my third. Oh, your third, wow. We should, to Live and Die in DC, Return of Jay. Which is the other one? The other one is, uh, what was it, Collide? Oh, I forgot about it. that was in 2009. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you told me that. Mm -hmm. And I forgot because I only remember Bruce, but said Bruce said, no, he's in Kulai back in 2009 with you. Absolutely. And I'm really sorry that I forgot that, but how do you like acting? I mean, in my production, you don't believe. <laughs> I love it, actually. Um, it's a brand new start for me. It's, you know, get, uh, spread my wings a little bit. You know, try different things. So, yeah, I absolutely love it. Yeah, uh, yeah, you know, it was a... It was a Fun job on that particular day. We been there half a day working, uh, but uh, you know it's a character only, a small character, but it's important. You know, there's no such thing as small, uh, you know, small role in any film, regardless whether you're in for five seconds or ten, ten seconds. You're in it, and there's a lifetime. You know, so uh, who knows? Next time you probably play a lead role. If Bruce doesn't take all the major notes, then I can be here. <laughs> I'm down for it. Yes. So thank you guys for coming and stick around. We're going to be showing you the movie and hope you like it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can I have many others? So, a very wide variety of martial arts. And one thing that I really love about Kali is just the, um, just the influence of many different martial arts incorporated into one. So uh, Lex is, is really humble. I mean, he's great as a, as a master, uh, whereas with his system, it's a lot more close quarters. I'm used to fighting more of long range. So I would have to learn how to range from long range to cl uh, medium to close, mm -hmm. and then using different martial arts depending on the situation. Right, right. Uh, you see, guys, don't mess with Asian guys, especially Filipino, <laughs> because we're short. But, you know, don't, again, don't judge uh, the book by its cover, because we can fight. <laughs> and uh, uh, well, thank you so much. Uh, stick around. Uh, I know I only used a little small portion of the uh, in the movie, but it's important where the leading actors are, are trying to learn some type of weapon and choosing your weapon, which is Arnick, is one of the best weapon that that she could uh, easily no no experience or anything that could easily learn, and she did a good job. Mm -hmm being there for less than an hour, and I was watching, wow, she learned a lot. And thank you guys for teaching her, uh, you know, the, the arts. And, and Brandon, uh, Brandon also, uh, come on in, Brandon. Brandon is the son of Bruce Dawson. 
It's also been in my movie. This is your second movie with me, right? It's my third. Oh, your third? Wow. We should, to live and die in DC. Return of Jay. Which is the other one? The other one is, um, what was it, Collide? Collide? Oh, I forgot about it. That was in 2009. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you told me that. Mm -hmm. And I forgot because I only remember Bruce, but said, Bruce said, no, he's in Collide back in 2009 with you. Absolutely. And I'm really sorry that I forgot that, but how do you like acting? I mean, in my production company. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, actually. Um, it's a brand new start for me. It's, you know, get, uh, spread my wings a little bit. You know, try different things. So, yeah, I absolutely love it. Yeah, um, yeah, you know, it was, a, it was a fun job on that particular day. We were there half a day working. Uh, but, uh, it, you know, it's a character, always a small character, but it's important. You know, there's no such thing as small, uh, you know, small role in any film. Regardless whether you're in for five seconds or ten seconds, you're in it. And there's a lifetime. You know, so uh, who knows, next time you probably play a lead role. If Bruce doesn't take all the major notes, then I give it to you. <laughs> I'm down for it. Yes. So thank you guys for coming and stick around. We're going to be showing you the movie and hope you like it. I'm here with Amazing Mummies. Uh, for some reason, you know, I, they're, they, you know, the kids is the only one supposed to be in a movie. But we are filming in their houses and their location and I need some more background extra and turn out to be, they play a major part in the movie. But first, I have here Amy Young. Uh, Amy, how are you? I'm good, thank you so much for having me. And tell us about your role uh, in the movie. Well, I play Helen and I'm a hit woman and I'm part of the team that is doing the human trafficking. And I'm so happy to be able to be in a film like this and can bring awareness to such a evil crime. So thank you. Right. You guys remember the movie As Good As It Get? Yeah. 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 You're looking at the actors now, Helen Hunt. <laughs> she, she looked like Helen Hunt, really, right? Yeah, uh, yeah I know I, I know Helen, I mean Amy. <laughs> that, uh, you are so busy you got our project. Back to back, can you tell us about your other project besides Return of Jane Brook that you're working on? Yes, yeah, so right now I have a couple projects in production. Um, and one I actually completed was a Christian film. Another, um, another opportunity to bring awareness to another um, problem in our world, which is um, heroin and addiction. And so I was able to complete that project as well. Um, some other projects I'm working on, it's actually another project um, it's called Smack. And um, it's also another drug problem. I can't share too much, but I'm really thrilled to be working on that project as well. Um, I have another project coming up, miscalculated, and really having a lot of fun in the filming industry. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for uh, being part of this project. And uh, it was fun. Uh, you've been in the set, at, I believe, th three, three days mm -hmm. location of filming? In three yes, different locations. three days. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, it was fun. I had a great time. And it's so easy to work with you. I don't even need to do any mm -hmm. directing. You know, I just said, hey, here's the script, Amy. What do you think? You know, you can do improv or whatever. And you did an amazing job. Thank you for being part of the project. Thank you, Jen. I really appreciate the opportunity. Yes. And next to uh, Amy is Nicole, probably, right? Yes, the mom. The mom. <laughs> uh, we shot uh, one of the scenes in her house. And I said, wait a minute, I need a mother to play a, a character. And that's a perfect role for you because, you know, is, is she for you natural? So uh, is she the first time? Does. First time acting, right? Actually, I got kind of reeled in with another one, with this one, with uh, Angels Within. Oh, too. okay. They said I looked like a good mom then, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Nicole, for letting us use your sure. nice house in Winchester. And uh, hopefully... Thank you, can... you for the opportunity. Um, everybody has been so much like family to us, and we are just, we, I just feel so honored and privileged that my children have had this opportunity. And for me to be a part of it too, it's going to be a wonderful memory for us forever. Yes, yes, and uh, I, I'm sure you're going to like the 
you know, the, the, the scene that I shot in your house. So uh, don't forget to mention when you sell your house, it's going to be maybe 50,000 more because it's usually in the movie. Okay. <laughs> My husband's there to support us, so. <laughs> Thank you, Daddy. <laughs> and uh, I have Grace. Well, Laura. Grace is Laura. Mom. Grace is, Grace is the... Uh, yeah, Grace is pretty unforgettable. I'm right. just the mom. Laura, <laughs> uh, another mom, another natural acting in that particular scene. Well, it was not exactly a stretch for me to play the role as her mother. Yeah. yeah. So uh, just kind of acted like myself. And yeah. yeah thank you so much. And I, I think that's your first time too, right? Or uh, second? Yes. We've, I've gotten pulled into being extras with her and other things, but... It's usually just to try and support her and what she mm -hmm. loves to do. So, but here in this in this project, you have a Larry Spiegler. You're not extra. You play a major role in the show. <laughs> well, I get to play her mom. <laughs> it's always a, it's always a pleasure. So. Right, right. And I have here Noah. If you guys don't know Noah Devers, this guy I don't know how many IMDb he got, but I check him out. I think he got about four IMDb. I'm sure he got a lot more that is not credited yet. But this guy won three times best young actors or young child actors. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I can see because I say I gave him the script and I tell Noah, whatever you think that play natural with you playing your Noah with your sister, go for it. And he did a really amazing job. Noah, tell us about. Not about this movie, but your other project that you won three times as Best Young Actor. Um, well, I got those from the Bill Tillman and the Elwells, where our, I played the main character's son. It was just a really good opportunity. It was freezing out, so, uh, yeah. But, but pretty much everything besides that was great, so, yeah. Tell about Swagger. Oh, yeah, and uh, there's in, uh, very recently, it's called Swagger, and it's out on Apple TV. I love that show. <laughs> so this guy. And I'm so proud of you, Noah, because you're now part of the MJG production. I hope you go far. You become so big and successful. And if you need a bodyguard or, or a choreographer or something, I'm always here, right? Uh -huh, thank you. So, uh, yes, yeah, so. Uh, Thank you so much, and uh, give a shout out. Can I give sure, a shout of course, out? Okay, of course. Thanks. So I want to give a shout out to Lisa Bagbing. She is a dynamic woman. We are putting together, put together actually, a, a twelve woman only directing and producing team. We've got lots of productions coming up. I want you all to stay tuned for that. <laughs> Maybe you can do some collaboration. Maybe if she needs some Asian extra, I'll be. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, mommy. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I'm here with John, the comedian, a professional stand-up comedian. He's been everywhere, New York, you name it. Uh, this guy is probably something that you will hear sooner or later. But he also played uh, one of my special guests in my WMI FF12 annual. He played uh, Detective, Wheels. Detective Wills in the movie that he was nominated and actually won Best Supporting Actor in the show. Right. Yes, yes, right. yes, and uh, he's, in, he's in this movie, uh, played. Well, I could say a major role on the small team, but a major role. There are no small roles. Right. <laughs> so tell us, John, about the movie itself, about being in uh, Return of J. Group. Well, you know, I actually enjoyed that because usually, you know, the other two films I play a detective, right? Uh -huh. So it was an interesting thing to play a hitman this time. So. I really like that, you know. Mm -hmm. Got to hold the gun and, and shoot old June in the movie. So, <laughs> no, I, I really enjoyed that though. So, you know, it, it gives me another um, aspect as far as um, acting, you know. So I won't be pigeonholed to just playing one role. Right, and it's so easy for you to act because you know you are 
uh, a comedian. Pretty much any role you probably can, you know, get easily. And you've been in my project, uh, To Live and Die in DC also. Yes, yes, I definitely was in that. And yeah. you played Donald Trumpter, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was, was very was funny. <laughs> I made that, I made that character for you. But tell us about your, 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 your comedy. Oh. What's going on with your comedy? Because you're all over places. It basically, I am all over the place, but you know, um, actually, just to give you a short biography of what I've done, um, I started doing comedy in 2011, and um, uh, since then, um, I got my first acting gig also in 2011 because I played in a, um, a stage play, right? Mm -hmm. um, actually, it was a woman that was at one of my um, shows, and she came up to me after the show. She was like, you know what, you funny as hell, right? She said, I'm doing a stage play called Laugh to Stop from Crying, and I already have a comedian in it, but I want you to come and audition for one of the actor parts. Wow. So I went in, you know, did my audition. After I finished my audition, um, you know, I like to speak things into existence, right? Mm -hmm. So she was like, I'll call you if we decide to give you the role. So I looked at it, I said, well, I look forward to you calling me because you're going to be calling me. So I ended up playing in that play, and I ended up playing three characters mm -hmm. in that play. And she did it two years in a row, mm -hmm. which involved me, so I enjoyed doing that. And um, I got to perform, as far as my comedy, I got to perform with some, some very well-known comedians. Um, it was a show that was done at Constitution Hall with some more earthquake, Tony Rock, which is Chris Rock brother, and um, Arnaz J, mm -hmm. and uh, I was the opening act. And you can catch that on YouTube because I uploaded a snippet of it. You put a comedian John Thompson sure. at Constitution Hall, so that was a, a big memory for me because um, as I was on stage and at the end of my set, you know, I was supposed to bring on some more. So when I turned to her and I got ready to announce her, she was like, "No." keep going. I was like, okay. She wanted me to keep going, so that let me know she enjoyed what I was doing, and the Pack House also did, too. So I got also to perform with, um, uh, let me see, Michael Collier, uh, uh, Kevin Anthony, all Def Comedy Jam people, uh, Tony Woods, uh, Kevin Lee. Um, as a matter of fact, Kevin Lee is a guy you saw on Def Comedy Jam back in the day. He was the guy that was uh, juggling fire. Okay, Kevin Lee. Um, the list of names goes on, so let's just say I had performed with some of the best of them and held my own. Right? That's um, right. Yeah. 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 And, uh, being a comedian, being an actor, I know you're going to be in Detective MJ, which is a good friend of mine, Morris Mall, this, yes. this film, yes. working, and we're done filming yes. that. Actually, actually, we've done filming that, and mm -hmm. I don't know uh, what name he's going to call this one, but what I can tell you, is off the hook. You want to enjoy? I'm sure. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you, John, for uh, for being here and watch this movie and supporting yeah. us. Yeah. And uh, it's my pleasure. It's Hollywood in DC, baby. Right. Woo! Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you guys, I don't know. Uh, you probably heard Hollywood in Washington DC. I don't really air that much, but this talk show I started way back in 2006. Wow. And then I have a lot of good-looking actors who host it to interview with me. Some of them are doing big things, but I stopped doing it because I didn't have time. But now it's time for me to put it back on again because I think, why not? Because a lot of actors that work with me for the last 15 years have become good, uh, made it to the top, say, hey, man, they started with me, and I brought the Hollywood in D.C. Yeah. So I have bring it back again. Yeah. But me not hosting because I'm not a good host, uh, the professional host will be probably doing much better than what I'm doing. Uh, I'm sure she'll forgive me, uh, Tommy Barbosa. But yeah. Oh, and last but not least, um, thanks to June, I will be in the sequel of Return of Jay Brooks. Yes. yes. All right. And as we, uh, you've been in my project two, project two picture film in less than a year. To live and die in DC, you're in it, right? Yes. And then again to. Uh, Return of Jay Brooks. So tell us about, he, he's just a good actor and the voice and everything else, normal. 
Are you an actor before? Uh, uh, <laughs> on the internet, yes. You know what I'm, I'm, a, I'm a internet comedian. Uh, first of all, thank you, June. Uh, thank you, everybody, also coming out and just sending the support that you all have for the film. Um, I appreciate you, man. You know, uh, my guy, he called me up to be in the movie with him, and, you know, just working with you, man, has been an amazing thing. You asked to see if I wanted to, you know, uh, be in this movie. I'm absolutely. Got my son in there as well. You know, he got a, a little port off in there as well, man. And so we just, we're just enjoying it, man. And I think this is the one, this right here, the role that I played is definitely going to give me a couple Oscars. Uh, maybe <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Well, uh, I know we submitted, the movie submitted uh, the music to Grammy. Okay. So if you, may, if you win in the Grammy, that's like considered an Oscar, right? Probably. I got a call, but I, it's Pam. I, I, I don't know if that was. Okay, we'll see. Yeah. We'll uh, see. Thank you. Yeah, uh, well, thank you. Thank you so much for uh, thank you. for supporting us. And again, guys, don't be strangers. You all become part of my extended family. So uh, after the movie, you can call me anytime. I turn up my, my cell phone anyway, so the boys will kick in after that. <laughs> Master Jew. So, uh, yeah. Uh, Master Jew. It was a really good experience. That's why everybody here that I treat them as a family. Yeah. And because, you know, this, that's all we do. Uh, we act, we, we join, we have so much fun. Because what else out there? You know, I'm, I'm going to be 65 coming up, and I'm getting lonelier, but... You know, if I get lonelier, I just pop in my projection and watch my old film that I did. Right. It makes me feel young again. Yeah. yeah. So uh, in fact, I'm, I, I, I said, uh, this is the most talented actors put together in one project. Uh, I'm, I'm really serious about saying this. Although, Athena, first time acting in the movie, she did an amazing job. I'm so glad that the three other leading actors that I'm supposed to put in turn, turned their back on me. Oh, wow. And guess what? I got four times more out of this girl who never acted before, but did an amazing job. Athena, thank you so much for being part of the project playing Jade Brooks. So first of all, tell us about your experience. Well, first of all, thank you so much. It was a great opportunity. I love working with you, G, and Jose. Um, I learned the camera, how to use the camera, which was amazing. Um, learning my lines was so much fun. Acting with everyone was so much fun, and it was a great opportunity, so I thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, by the way, uh, I know I'm having a hard time finding an actor to play the lead role, and I'm smart enough to uh, pick someone that I know is going to be their Anytime I need her, because she's actually my niece. <laughs> uh, so uh, I know she's gonna be. I'm gonna be. She's gonna be reliable, and we abuse uh, moms and dad's house, the beautiful house in Arlington that they let us shoot a uh, couple of the scenes, a lot of scenes in there. Thank you, uh, David and Wendell, for using, for letting us use your amazing, beautiful house in Arlington. So Athena. Uh, you're 17. Yes. Uh, you're actually doing a lot of projects now, I mean, in terms of activities. You are a swimmer. I am, yeah. And uh, what's the future for Athena? Um, I'm currently applying to college, which is crazy oh. and scary. I um, uh, started my swim season this week, so that's fun. Mm -hmm. um, school, you know, work. Right. Uh, going to college meaning possibly next year you can be in college? Yeah. Oh, I better start writing the, the script real quick and, <laughs> and use two days out of that. Get those checks in. Yes, yes. <laughs> and Athena here really helps me a lot. Uh, she's very natural in, in, in the camera. Uh, because since I don't have a cinematographer, I did everything pretty much myself because I'm a cheap guy. I don't pay $300 a day for cinematographer where well, I can use it. Uh, but all the actors, especially Tina and Gisna here, really helped me set up a, a scene where, I don't, where we have a second camera. Sometimes I don't even use a camera operator, I just set up everything, which one scene I did with Tammy Barbosa, no camera person, it's just me and her, and I set the camera, two camera, and just play, play it on. So Tina. Thank you so much. You did an amazing job in this project. You're going to love it. Thank I know some you. of the scenes you saw it. 
and you're going to be proud that you, you did this, and, 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 and thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Yes, uh, and Patrick, uh, one of the busiest uh, actor in the DMV, he also played the, the, the leading role, although we did not get a chance to shoot a couple of scenes because of timing schedule and, and, and all that, but definitely he's coming back. Uh, Patrick has been in two of my projects last year and this year, so Patrick, tell us what's going on with you, what's, what's, what you're working on. Uh, well, right now, uh, I'm right here kind of soaking up this moment. <laughs> uh, I, I do have a couple other things I'm working on. Uh, this week I'm filming a World War II movie, Talons of the Phoenix. Mm -hmm. And I am also, uh, as a member of the Cultural Arts Advisory Board for the City of Gaithersburg, mm -hmm. I'm kind of working as project manager on their film series this year. And I was, uh, I was able to add a evening for local filmmakers, because um, one of my ambitions is to kind of play it forward and give other people some opportunities to get their work out there and get seen. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow, there's a lot of stuff going on in there. So uh, I'm so glad that you are, you are, you know, took your time and, and, and being in the set. And first of all, I apologize for not filming, I think, two, three scenes that we missed just because of time schedule. But you know how it is. Uh, Sometimes it, it happens like that, especially in independent film, that not everyone are contracted or all paid that, you know, actors, when they in contract, they need to be there regardless. But in independent community, sometimes things might happen in a day. But as a filmmaker, you have to be aware of that. You have to be really flexible of what you can do. Sometimes you need to uh, delete certain scenes because actors are not there. And that's what the independent industry is, especially in this area. Uh, thank you so much, Patrick, and uh, I hope you like the movie. So stay, stay there, and, and uh, come on, actually switch. Then we have Doris here, because Doris, uh, there's a lot more to talk, Doris. Slide because, to the left. Uh, Slide to the right. Doris here is, I've worked with, with her with several projects in the last year. She's everywhere. You probably see her in TV soon. Can you tell us about that? Because you've been, you've been going to LA and other places doing this uh, TV shows, um, Mel Robbins talk show, Doctor and the Diva, a lot of them are like uh, one season pilot shows. Um, I have a, a episode coming up in Judge Jerry Springer, December 28th, all episode. Uh, so that's coming up, yeah, Judge Jerry Springer. Um, and uh, Pawn Stars is coming up, uh, so we'll be doing Pawn Stars. Uh, did a couple other things too. Um, we don't really have to get into that, but I'm here to support June and to support, you know, the local acting community and. Right. Yeah. I mean, she did a good job playing oh, the hit man, yeah. hit woman, yeah. Cl the cleaner. <laughs> yeah, the cleaner. I played the cleaner. She played the cleaner. Yeah. And uh, I know you also in Maori story, <laughs> Maori something about the, the the thing that you wrote and get into this. Uh, is that the one for Jerry Spring or the Maury something? Maury Povich? Yes. Uh, this is just the same studio. It's the NBC, oh, the same studio. NBC studio, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, I can't yeah. wait to see that. So uh, yes. hopefully we can see it. I know. And, um, well, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. I had to tell it straight up. <laughs> you know me. Doggy. a puppy, friendly neighborhood puppy, you barked up the wrong tree, one in six to park like me, a wolf in sheep's clothing, got your spanks exploding, not your typical dime piece, got you roaming like sales piece, honeymoon and menage fleece, flipped you wearing my old leash, cause soon she discovered, a hound like no other, my pound where you at right, sound off on the left right, my soldier sound off right.